Well, I've been working on cleaning out my garage. I got this half pretty cleared out. Um, and I got the message that the tractor is on its way. Should be here any minute. Uh, now, of course, there's still that half of the garage, uh, which would be a little bit nice to get a bit cleaner, but hey, uh, we do what we can. Tractor should be here any minute now. And right on cue, here comes the tractor. Now my driveway is practically in a corner intersection, so it's uh, certainly less than ideal for backing a long tractor into. Uh, even so, uh, this guy did a pretty good job, uh, pr probably better than I would do. There's our first close-up view of the tractor. So again, this is an International Harvester 300 utility. This is either a 1955 or 56. International had made about 3 million tractors before this one rolled off the assembly line. It was pretty cold in the morning, so uh, it was actually a little tough to start. I dragged out a spare battery and some jumper cables, and then we were able to get it to start right up. Tractor rolls very nicely. So here we go, it's parked in my driveway. Uh, the tractor itself has a nice big bucket on the front that's about five and a half feet wide. The loader is pretty nicely integrated uh, into the tractor. It's all the same color. Um, all the controls are more or less built right in. And just because I was curious, I wanted to see how big this was compared to my car. Uh, the body of it is lower than the roof of the car. The tractor is longer and the tractor is heavier. Uh, clearly it also has bigger wheels, but hey, they're both rear wheel drive. Uh, the car has better traction control. And they both look like they're ready to be on a farm. Now, of course, I had to test out the tractor. Not being a farm boy, I've really never driven a tractor before. Uh, the first thing I wanted to do was test out the hydraulics. There's just two handles. One uh, raises the loader arm up and down, and the other tilts the bucket front and back. Um, I played around with these a little bit. Uh, I did find that essentially the engine is directly driving the hydraulic pump. So to really get good speed raising it, I needed to give the engine a little bit more speed. Of course, on a tractor, that's done with a hand throttle. Um, I also noticed that one of the positions uh, for lowering the bucket lowered it really, really fast. And uh, you get a little bit of bounce out of the tractor when doing that, uh, especially with that uh, front tire being low on air. The whole thing kind of shakes around, so I was a little careful to not lower the arms too fast. Here's a front view. Uh, one of the other things with this bucket is there is a homemade quick release on there. So it's actually very easy to completely remove the bucket. Uh, so this would be, for example, if you wanted to put something else on there quickly, like, um, you know, tines, like for uh, a forklift or moving pallets, you could uh, quick swap those out very fast. Now, right now, all we have though is the bucket. So there's really uh, no reason to do that unless you're doing work all day that does not use the bucket loader. You could always just drop it off just to save some weight. This tractor has a five-speed transmission. Uh, it turns out reverse is right where I thought first was. Once I figured that out where first gear actually was, it's very easy to drive. Uh, one thing that's a little different, you almost have to stand on the pedals. I mean, this has a big clutch and big brakes. Uh, it's not quite like driving a little uh, five-speed economy car. Now, when I designed my garage, one of the things that I decided was I wasn't going to have any windows. There's actually an upstairs to the garage. I do have windows up there, but not in the downstairs. And one of the reasons why I wanted that was for security. Um, also, I'd probably just have shelves or storage right over any windows anyways. 
Um, and I could even make it dark if I wanted to do video lighting and photography. But what I did is I built kind of this French door over one of the garage doors. So the whole idea there is that in the winter, when it's sunny, I can raise the garage door, but um, letting the sunlight in and actually help heat the garage, let a lot of nice natural sunlight in. Uh, but I also wanted to design it so that I could relatively easy uh, to open and close this. And it turns out I've never actually used it. I've used that side as my workshop space. This is actually the first time ever that I opened up uh, my, my passive solar garage door here uh, to bring a vehicle in or out. There's a pressure treated two x four across the bottom that's uh, part of the threshold that these doors close up against. I did want to not uh, bump that out of place with the, the big tractor tires, no issues there. Uh, went right over that two x four just fine. But take a look at where the muffler is. Now look at my face, right? Then. <laughs> That's when I realized that the muffler on the tractor is actually too tall to fit into my garage. Uh, there were two different ways that the mufflers on this particular tractor could be. One is uh, down low down the side of the tractor and the other is just straight up like what you see here. So I did just grab some welding gloves and with the welding gloves I was able to uh, remove the muffler. Now take a listen to how this sounds uh, with the muffler on it versus after I take the muffler off. Clearly gasoline engines are designed to work with a certain amount of back pressure to them and uh, it does not run as nicely without that uh, exhaust on there. Uh, the other thing of course as soon as I got it inside the garage as I realized how much I dislike gasoline stuff. Um, it smelt like gasoline, it smelt like exhaust. Uh, there were a couple of uh, drips of yucky, greasy, gasoline ick on my floor. But all I had to do was uh, straighten out the tractor and back straight in and it was just fine. My garage door here is a pretty typical 9 foot wide by 7 foot tall single car garage door opening. And I don't even hit my head, which is good. And it sounds much better after killing the engine. I just had to bring the muffler back from where I threw it into the snow, and then I could close these doors up. Okay, we got the tractor inside. I switched over to a wide angle lens. Woo, we go wide. Uh, uh, giving us some distortion. <laughs> There's much less room in here than it would appear with this lens, but we can get close and still see the darn thing. Uh, pretty decent size, but one thing I did before I, I brought all this in was uh, when we looked at the tractor, um, we measured it. I actually uh, put some marks on my floor from the garage door on back so that uh, cleaning my garage I would know exactly how much space. I figured uh, 17 feet and we were actually back from the garage door just a little bit. So hey, I, look at that, I cleaned the right amount of space. That's cool. Um, on the back here we got our PTO, we got our three-point lift, well two-point because it's international but Add the third link there, it's three point. Nice big uh, tires in the back. You can see these tires are pretty worn. Um, they're not really cracked or anything, but just the tread itself is really pretty worn down. We'll squeeze by here. Uh, these wheels make the 60 pound wheel weights for my Electrac seem pretty, pretty puny now. Up here, uh, we got the 12 volt starting battery. Uh, the gear selector, which was interesting because I didn't know the shift pattern. I knew it was five speed. Uh, re reverse was where I expected first to be, so that was kind of fun. Instrumentation up here. We'll change some of that to maybe volts, amps, that kind of a thing. There's the gasoline engine back inside all of that. we got to put some air in this front tire here. Over there's my engine hoist. We'll make use of that. And that's it. That's the tractor. And I suppose actually pulling the muffler off right here 
That's the very first step in converting it to electric, uh, taking off part of the exhaust system. So don't worry, we're gonna have lots of updates on this project as we go, but probably the very first thing is gonna be figuring out how to get uh, the front loader off because it is big and heavy and I can't get at the engine and everything else with all of this in the way. So that's gonna be the first big challenge. That'll be some work, but pretty exciting project. And until next time, stay charged up.